this as a That's just how we do. do. Where do I do. Finances and to give you goals to help you become money confident or economically empowered. So let's start off today with our hot topics. We all know this is Labor Day weekend, and I'm excited. I know you all excited. This is what is considered the end of all summer festivities and backyard barbecues and et cetera, but this also is the beginning of the, the retail sales that are going on from this point through the rest of the year. Now, during this time, people rush out to take advantage of the sales that they see on TV. 30% off, 65% off, come in and we'll help you out. Don't be fooled. There are some items you should just leave on the shelf right now. Don't get pulled in too easily with this, this weekend sale. And I'll tell you a few items that you could consider just leaving on the shelf for a while. First of, of them being electronics. There are some, some places like Best Buy that are saying, come in, 35 to 65 percent off. Yeah, well, that sounds good, but do they really have a great variety? Maybe not. However, keep this in mind. Just wait a few months during the Black Friday weekend, and you will have a greater variety of electronics to choose from, and you'd have an even greater discount, 80% off of that iPod. So I encourage you to just hold out for just a month and a half, couple of months, and you will save yourself even more money. Secondly, clothes, winter clothes. Uh, J.C. Penney's Coles and some of the other ones are advertising sales 30% off. Well, yeah, that sounds great. However, keep in mind all of the winter gear just came off of the truck. So that inventory is still really highly priced. Once again, just wait a little while longer. Uh, my suggestion is to start looking at the winter gear in mid to late October. You'll see those prices reduce. And then even more so during the Black Friday weekend. So we, we definitely encourage you, just hold out. Don't get fooled by some of these ads that are saying, save, save, save. And then lastly, airfares. You hear a lot of airlines saying that they're offering discounts. Well, yeah, they, they are. However, you save a little more money during the months of October through November. And a lot of people are, at this point, planning for their holiday travels. I encourage you once again to hold out just a little longer, late, mid to late October, and you'll save a little more money. Don't get caught up because you think during this weekend you will save so much more. I encourage you, be disciplined, just wait a little longer for those sales and to shave off on the savings. Those are your hot topics for today. I will move on to announcements. The National Coalition of the 100 Black Women will be having their sixth annual Women of Color in Leadership Summit and Legacy Awards luncheon. That will take place on October the 29th. That is a Tuesday, 2012. It will be held at the Creighton University Harper Center, which is located at 2500 Plaza uh, in Omaha, uh, there will be door prizes available. A little more information on that. The summit will will take place all day from 8 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. So that's taking that's the entire time of the 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 summit and legacy awards. That's 8 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. And the luncheon piece of that will start at 12 p.m and go to 1.30 p.m. If you decide to stay the entire day for the luncheon and the summit, the price is $75. And if you want to just attend the luncheon, that's $50. 
Uh, if you are a student with your student ID, you would be able to get a $25 discount for the entire day summit and luncheon at $50. The keynote speaker for this event is Ms. Tawana Blake, who is the president and owner of Innovations by Design LLC. Now, during the luncheon, they will honor several women who have paved the way uh, for others in the community. And some of those ladies will be honoring have uh, dedicated their lives in the areas of uh, economic well-being, uh, holistic development. So keep in mind, this is a great time. Some of the honorees will be Marilyn Sims of the Urban League, Doris Moore of Center of Holistic Development, B.C. Clark of the Midwest Omaha Women's Business Center, and Carolyn Grice of OPS, and uh, Theola Cooper with Omaha Police Department. Also, we will be uh, honoring a school, that school being ones dedicated to the academic, spiritual, and economic well-being in this community, that school being the College of St. Mary. So the actual summit, great day of breakout sessions surrounding the theme, I'm every woman, it's all in me. And secondly, the National Coalition of 100 Black Women presents Gourmet Gents. It is a fundraiser that will take place on Sunday, October 13, 2013 at Creighton University Harper Center, located at 602 North 20th Street here in Omaha. The Gourmet Gents event is from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. They are looking for gents to come out and showcase their culinary skills. Tickets for Gourmet Gents are $25 in advance and $30 day of event. The tickets can be purchased online or through one of the 100 black members member. Uh, both the Gourmet Gents and the Women of Color and Leadership Conference can be taken care of online. The Women of Color and Leadership Summit, you can register. We encourage you to register online www.ncbw, that's N as in Nancy, C as in Charlie, B as in boy, C as in cat, excuse me, NCBW, W as in water, National Coalition of 100 Black Women, NCBW dot, excuse me, NCBW Omaha dot org as well as the Gourmet Gents, you may go out to www.ncbw.org. N as in Nancy, C as in Charlie, B as in Boy, W as in Water, Omaha.org. Again, uh, those are our announcements for today. We will go ahead and talk about our topic for today, which is Stop the Insanity or stop the apathy. Several years ago, Susan Powder proclaimed to Americans, stop the insanity, all centered around people who are overweight and helping them with their health and wellness to lose the weight. And so instead of saying, well, let's just do it, she said, stop the insanity. We don't have to move any further going through a, a time of being overweight. So I encourage you guys today to consider stopping the apathy. So here's the questions. Do you believe you can be made whole financially? Do you have the passion to be set free? Are you where you need to be financially? And are you handling your business? Are you letting things go? Or are you facing your financial issues? Now, all of these questions revolve around your mindset when it comes to money. Here's another question. Are you the type to go on a spending frenzy? 
or do you go on an emotional frenzy when you are stressed? In other words, do you suffer from financial flu the time when, when you suffer and spend away your money when things are not going correct or right in your life? For example, your love life not going right, so you overcompensate by overspending. And so with that, your priorities are whack. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot change what you will not confront. You cannot change what you won't confront. Many of us stick our heads in the sand and we ignore what's going on. We ignore the things that give us the power to change. For example, do you know your credit score? Are you afraid to pull your credit report to see what's on there, see what it looks like? Gotta, gotta face it, if you wanna take your financial lives to the next level, I encourage you, pull your credit report. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. But, you know, you can't stick your head in the sand and like, oh, well, let's just wait and see what happens. I had a client uh, several weeks ago who wanted to, to have some credit restored, pulled his credit report. He did not realize when we pulled it that he was virtually debt free other than student loans. He had no other debt. And he was surprised that the credit card he did have at one time contributed to a pretty high credit score. So it, it is imperative some of us to just take take what we have and and see what what we are and where we can move forward and how to move forward. So we got to move forward because we're not getting any older. Some of us, you know, may have a type of retirement plan through their jobs. Or some of us may, so they may use a financial planner or consultant to set up a retirement plan. If you do not have a retirement plan, I strongly encourage you to set up a financial plan. And then also, are you saving for your child's education? Child's education is very important. We don't know where we'll be in 20 years, for example. Um, we, we just have to just have the mindset of we, we have to start saving for our children's education, their future. And it's just a little bit of money here and there that we can set aside. Some of our spending we can cut out. For example, and sample McDonald's. A standard or average McDonald's meal deal is $5.50, $5.50, and so, on a monthly basis, that's $66. And per year, that's $792. And so over the span of 18 years, if you would have had a child today and saved until they were 18 going to college, the total cost of that McDonald's cheeseburger or meal deal, you would have saved $14,246 just by shaving off the McDonald's hamburger or meal deal three times a week. So we, we gotta realize when, when making steps towards financial prosperity, towards financial wholeness, financial well-being, we have to realize we have to not only trust God, but we have to make steps toward it because God will help those who help themselves. You just can't sit there and wish that everything will go away. But here are some things you can do. You can be a giver. Give not only to other people, give to your church, bless others' lives. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, praised down, shaken together and rolling over will be poured back into your lap. That comes from Luke 6 and 38, scripture in the Bible. So give, give your way out of debt. You can do that. But you just can't give and think, okay, well, that's it. Uh, I'll just sit on my hands. But God will bless what you do. You have to be a thinker. Well, what, what is it that I can do to be financially prosperous? Can I go back to school and learn something that will make my family's life a little easier? 
you can think about where you can take your your in your personal lives to the next level that will then affect your financial lives and plan you have to be a planner what steps do I need to take what goals do I need to set and meet to become prosperous and then also and, and lastly be a worker walk it out you just can't sit on your hands once again and, and wish it you have to put in the work you have to show up to the classroom you have to pull out the pen and paper and write down your your goals and then plan out how to move forward financially and get out and, and do the work walk it out take the necessary steps to do what you need to do financially take your family to the next level and so ladies and gentlemen it is not too late to turn it around you can have the skills to become money confident and so you said well okay that's wonderful that's great let me see what I can do there there are several things that you can do to take your financial lives to the next level you ask how do I begin well I'm glad you asked one you can start out speaking life into your finances that's right speak life you can't just once again hope and pray that it goes away or it'll get better on its own speak life into your personal finances I was speaking to someone the other day and she's a home-based business owner and she said I'm broke I'm just broke you know business is not doing too well I'm broke well I guess go figure is not doing well because you just spoke death I'm broke I'm broke I'm broke will not take your business and take your personal finances to the next level what could be said instead is right now the resources are low I'm working very hard with my business and as long as I keep moving my feet I will um, I'll be making the, the positive changes so that my money will increase there are several affirmations that you can speak over your finances such as money is good I resist all resistance to have money and every day my bank balance is positive and is growing and I release the need or belief to live in poverty also the past is gone yeah we might have had some troubles financially but the past is gone right now I live in the present and I expect even greater things in the future uh, six I am a giver given it shall be given into as we discussed earlier what can you do give seven being wealthy is my inherent right if you believe you are health are wealthy because God made you wealthy in his word you can be wealthy and you have the right to be wealthy eight I am a money magnet and I attract money money comes to me and through me nine I'm getting more and more money every day it's coming to me coming my way because I'm walking it out and lastly I let go of all internal struggles that keep me down and keep me from attaining financial success once again speaking internal struggles well oh, it, it, things will never go right yes they can everything can get better and so I want to encourage you to, to think about what you can say what you can do that will take your financial lives to the next level because once again it's all about mindset I'm going to uh, give you a few scriptures that you can take a look at when you uh, you go over maybe every day just take a look at these scriptures to help develop that mindset to attain financial prosperity and I want you to write them on a three by five card whatever it is that the Lord gives you that God gives you that will help you financially but they, that's that's a tip 
It doesn't necessarily have to be from me. However, here are some examples that I, you can use. Number one, you can, can put on a three by five card, God creates wealth. Believe that he creates wealth. And Deuteronomy 8 and 12 states, remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives us power to get wealth. And in the second three by five card, you can say, I'm feeling rich, and I give thanks to God for that. That scripture um, that you could use for that particular, that particular card is Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, which states, a rich man should not boast of his wealth, but be, be thankful to God. And then number three, you can write, I save for my kids' inheritance. And a, a, a good example of saving for your kids' inheritance is just putting money away in a CD for them or some type of, um, time, some type of investment where the funds grow. And then not only that, saving for the kids' inheritance, teaching them the principles of financial success. But in Proverbs 13 and 2, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I'll, I'll give this story again. I told you guys about this last time. I worked with a financial planner in my firm who was about 20 years old. He was a millionaire. And, you know, I thought, well, how is he 20 years old and he's a millionaire? And, you know, the saying goes, if you want to be a millionaire, take a millionaire to lunch. So I took him to lunch. And, you know, after a little bit of time in conversing with him, I asked him, well, I understand that you're a millionaire. How did you become a millionaire at 20, you know, just doing financial planning? He said, well, actually, I'm Jewish. And in our culture, we are taught to save up and leave an inheritance for our children's children. So how I attained my wealth was through an inheritance from my grandparents. He said, we taught in the, we were taught and we still teach in the Jewish community to say we around the dinner table, we're taught financial principles. And they take that information, that knowledge to the next level. So that information is being passed generationally and, and we can also teach those same principles. So again, save for your um, kids' inheritance. Again, that scripture is Proverbs 13 and 2. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And number four, you could write on your three by five card, I am out of debt because my Life is free. I can get out of debt and get my things in order because I am free. I am whole financially. Because the, the debt starts with the change. Excuse me, debt management, debt free starts with the change in our minds. And you can proclaim, I am out of debt and all my needs are met and I have plenty more in store. You can also state according to Philippians 4 and 19, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Those are scriptures you can use that again empower you that will get in your spirit anytime you think, oh I just can't do this anymore. I'm tired of being broke. Well hey speak those things, get them in your spirit and, and speak them when those negative minds or those negative thoughts come about. And then lastly, put God before your money. So on that three by five card, you can write, I put God before money. Matthews 6 and 33 states, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. I appreciate you guys' time. I will leave you with this quote for today. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That is a quote from Mr. Wayne Dyer. So you can flip it and say, when 
I change the way I look at money, the, the things or the money I look at change. Thank you so much for tuning in. You got it? Good. We'll talk to you next week.